Um, now we switch obviously to John Sessions and Hugh Laurie, and uh, the scene we'd like you to enact, if at all possible, would be a customer complaining to a waiter. And we want some genres to play in, preferably film genres, film styles. So, Gone, so, with, the gone with the Wind. Gone with the Wind sounds quite a good one. <laughs> I always bring my wife here to dinner, and I sat down here, and frankly, my dear, I don't care for flan. <laughs> Something like that. Another one, quickly. <laughs> carry on, carry on films, yes. I said I wanted a big one. And the one you brought me here, well, it's not exactly big, is it? Huh? I'll tell you, your time of life, it's a bloody miracle. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, when I go back to the kitchen and get me a nice French stick, then I can put it up, can't I? Oh, she's got a big pear over there, isn't she? What if she's going to eat it? Another one. <laughs> Another one there. Sorry? Bogart. Bogart. Humphrey Bogart, I, I take it you mean? Yes. Bogart. It could be Dirk Bogart, couldn't it? I mean, Humphrey Bogart. What is it? Is there a problem with the flan? What is it? Nothing. I'm just in Venice and I'm dying. <laughs> Another one. Batman. Sorry? Batman. Oh, well, we better settle for Batman then, since that came, came first. I was... Yeah, go ahead. I understood that you did demi chefing at the table. <laughs> do you not? Do demi chefing at the table? <laughs> or Holy do you? Holy flambéed flan, Batman. <laughs> it's all a question, Commissioner, of whether the soup will come before the main course, or whether the main course will come... That's it, of course. Poor misguided child. <laughs> We'll finish on that one, and I think 15 points each there for Hugh and John. So we're now racing along to the next game, which is called Wrong Theme Tune. This is because, again, acting in pairs, they're given a television programme to enact, but enacting it in the style of the theme tune that's played to them, and it's obviously the wrong theme tune. And uh, they don't know what theme tune's coming, but acting together, Stephen and Hugh... Could you do a sort of open university program on splitting the atom? <laughs> Got the hang of that? Yes. Uh, but do it in the style of this theme tune. Well, we've had uh, a fascinating letter from J.G. Ballard of Wolverhampton. <laughs> Who says, I've got a couple of atoms, which I'm quite interested in splitting. I, uh, but I've been having a lot of trouble getting people to split them. The so we said, really? <laughs> and he said, yes, really, can't you read? I said, yes. So, first of all, I went to Atom Splitters, Inc. They weren't in. <laughs> So then we tried the managing director. Sorry, he's on holiday. <laughs> His secretary is dead. <laughs> so we began to wonder, does this company really exist? No. <laughs> if you want atoms splitted, our advice is... Go to the professionals. Ask the BBC to do it for you. <laughs> Cyril. <laughs> Well, now, uh, I think we have to award points there, and I think that was worth uh, 15 points each. Very, very good performance there. The next, uh, the next pair, obviously, is John and N. And could you act out a scene from Star Trek, the famous American TV series and now films, act out a scene from that in the style of this theme tune? I'd like a divorce, Captain. I, I don't think so, Shell. It's not going to work in this galaxy. No chance of it. I'm having a lot of trouble with my willy, Captain, my little willy. I know, but the thing is, Shell, if we stay in Venus, we'll have to wear those tight blue suits with the silly collars. They're called it Klingons, aren't they? <laughs> well, that is one of the side effects, yes. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, 
and uh, I think uh, <laughs> 15 points there to John and um, for, for messing it up. two points to Enritel for early use of woolly jokes. Which, uh... <laughs> now, the next game is called Every Other Line and uh, acting in pairs again, we've got this time John Sessions and Hugh Laurie acting together and um, yep. this time one of the partnership will be improvising a scene and the other will be reading every other line from a play that's been written in advance. It's the play that Hugh will be reading from every other line is The Ticket of Leave Man by Tom Taylor. And uh, we're going to give them a scene uh, to improvise. So John is improvising a scene of a bank manager uh, interviewing somebody who's come to ask about his overdraft. But to give them an aim, a point to aim at, can we have a last line that would cap that scene from somebody in the audience? Last line to a bank manager and somebody with an overdraft. Some, you must have been through this experience before. Get up off your knees. <laughs> Get up off your knees. Very good. I think that's the last line, rather yeah. than an instruction to me. I was getting desperate there. Uh, so, so, get up off your knees right. is the last line. Starting off with John, improvising your scene and aiming towards that last line. I'm not a mendicant, Mr. Sirencester, and I'd like to help you, but there's just the problem of the money you have and any collateral you have at the moment. I mean, have you got any? I suppose this is Robert. <laughs> Well, Robert is a name we could possibly give to your collateral. I don't know if you call your... I don't know if you call your house Robert. I mean, I know someone who causes his garage Montmorency, but he's very peculiar. But now you've got your discharge... <laughs> she'll have a protector. I don't think my wife's accident has got anything to do with this. Well, what do you mean to do? It's not a question of what I'm going to do, it's what you're going to do, and that is to provide me with some collateral. Then I can say, yes, you may have an overdraft. Tolerably good, sir. <laughs> I wouldn't say tolerably good, I said it was excellent. Well, hello, Granny. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say dramatic, get up off your knees. Thank you very much. And for that elegant slide into the final line, I think 20 points each there. So the next pairing, obviously Stephen and N. Uh, N right, I'll be reading every other line from The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. And um, Stephen will be improvising the scene of a junior sort of officer trying to speak to the general while the battle is going rather badly and trying to get some instructions about what to do, go forward, go back, something like that. Right. In improvising a panic in a battle scene. And again, could we have a, an end line? for that to finish on. Get that wet thing out of my ear. <laughs> that was brilliant, that was brilliant. What did you say? Get that wet thing out of my ear. <laughs> this this just... man has been causing trouble. Yes, he, he has, be. yes. We're just, uh, <laughs> mind you, the person thing. sitting next to him obviously has as well, but the... Uh... <laughs> we, we just have to check if that line is out of copyright, and... <laughs> Have you been dead for 50 years? <laughs> you will be soon. Now, uh, OK, so we're aiming towards that punchline. Uh, get that wet thing out of my ear. You're reading for importance of being earnest, and uh, you're improvising that scene. And go ahead. Uh, sir, sir, it's Pomkiss here. Uh, Royal Signals. Sir, well, sir, we're here at the... Fr uh, there are a lot of shells whizzing about, sir. I really need some pretty clear commands. How are you, my dear Ernest? <laughs> Well, uh, it's what fine, sir. To town? Uh, well, uh, the situation is pretty hard to read at the moment, actually, sir. There's a lot of smoke, a lot of smell of cordite. Uh, can you advise? Well, what on earth do you do there? Well, what we're trying to do, we're trying to cut Jerry off, sir. Uh, <laughs> there's one thing I like better than getting stuck into the Jerry. It's having a good go at the Germans. Oh. <laughs> Got nice neighbours in your part of Shropshire? <laughs> uh, can we... Can we cover that at a later date, do you think, sir? Uh, more urgent sort of pressing requirements at the moment vis-à-vis -vis escape from this uh, rather unfortunate contretemps. How utterly unromantic you are. <laughs> yes, sorry, I'm getting trouble from the Sergeant Major here. I, I'm very, finding it very hard to hear you. I'm going to have to put this, uh, the, the earpiece up. Look, sir, can we have some advice, please? Yes, I'm in love with Gwendolyn. <laughs> yes, so, Sergeant Major, would you get that wet thing out of my ear? 